Okay, it is, uh, it is 612. We have a quorum. We have more than a quorum now. Thank you everybody for bearing with us. We're all here. Most of us are here. Uh, so I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Um, I think the first item we need to go through here is to amend the agenda for the meeting tonight uh, because we need to uh, table the DBI contract vote until our regularly scheduled meeting for Tuesday. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. So, we'd also like to, like to add uh, a couple of additional uh, lease related documents so that there would be a total of four, which are the same four that were shared in the calendar invitation. Okay. Can you indicate what those four are? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, one, it, there's an assignment of the lease, um, a sublease, the consent to the sublease signed by the landlord. I thought we're doing the, that today. This for today. He's saying that we need to- saying we're adding two. He's adding them to today. We're taking the DBI off and we're okay. adding these items on. Yeah. Um, sublease, the assignment. Um, yes. Assignment, yes, sublease, and the landlord. Right. Is that correct? The right. SNDA, yeah. I don't know if we're ready for that. Um, we went through that this morning. Let me um, just check my notes, but I think that that's probably okay too. I think the SDNA, I don't know if we're ready for that one. I, th I think I mean, you, you could table it, but you ultimately want it though, right? I mean, you want to make sure that, that the school and friends are not disturbed in their tenancy by-, well, by We, we need thing. it. We absolutely need yeah, it. We need it, but we didn't review that. Um, okay, so we, we will then- the first three. I did note it. I just want to see what happened. Yeah. So okay. Sure. So um, let me do this again. I moved to change the agenda to, to table the vote for the DBI contract until Tuesday and to add the top three items that we're looking at here to the agenda, the assignment of the lease from the school as tenant to friends of as tenant, sublease between friends of and the school, and consent to sublease. And these are all doc, these are all attachments to the resolution that is, that is on the agenda, correct? Correct. Okay, good. I think the SNDA is where your subrogation issue comes up, uh, Joaquin. I know, my favorite. So um, we, we can discuss it. It may, it may be that we can put it to a vote. We have Cliff with us. Um, why don't we see what happens? Yeah, okay. Okay, so can I so get you really, you really didn't need to add the first three items because th those are already referred in the resolution. So just FYI, but that's okay. Okay. And for the amended agenda? No, and yeah, I'm saying technically your resolution has those items as exhibits. Okay. So in dealing with the resolution, you, 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 you directly or indirectly deal with these three items because we'll be discussing that, okay? Okay. Great. So take a vote on the on the amended agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 My host says aye. Okay. Second. I think I heard David second, right? No, no, we already voted. Yeah. I'm asking for yeah. the minutes. Was there a second? Oh, I'm sorry, the minute. Yes, I call us. I, I seconded earlier. Yeah, he did. We Thought all so. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. You want me to present now the resolution and the documents, walk you through very, very briefly. So today, basically, we're considering one resolution, and this resolution um, references three agreements, um, the first three that we're talking about, the assignment of the lease, the sublease between friends of the school, and the consent to sublease by the landlord. Essentially, these documents involve the landlord, our role as a tenant in this building, and the newly established Friends of Leap, who will be the new tenant with the landlord as it relates to the school. Um, so the first document, first I will briefly discuss what these three documents are and then the rationale, okay? 
And I do know that all of you had a chance to review the documents that we have sent you um, explanatory. So the first document basically assigns or transfers our role, our rights and obligations as a tenant in the lease with the landlord for this building, okay? So that instead of us, it will be friends, okay? So we're transferring our rights and obligations to friends. So that friends will be the tenant and the landlord will remain the landlord. Under this assignment, we, the school, no longer have a direct legal contract with the landlord, okay? Under this particular arrangement, okay? That's the first document. The second document establishes the relationship between LEAP and friends with respect to this building. So we've just discussed how friends now is the tenant of the building along with the landlord um, as the owner. And so now in order for the school to have a right to be in that building, we are now entering into a sublease between the friends and us in which friends becomes our new landlord and not to make things more confusing, it becomes a sub landlord <laughs> and we become the sub tenant. Okay. Now under this arrangement, we will be paying a gross rent to our landlord or the sub landlord called friends and that this gross rent will include base rent and various services that friends will be providing that being heat electricity gas etc cetera, etc cetera. now the benefit of this arrangement okay allows us to receive from the doe rent assistance which right now under this new sublease properly includes all facility related costs that are now classified as gross rent. As, as an aside, commercial leases like this one generally impose on tenants to pay double, triple or gross rents that include <laughs> these kinds of items, maintenance, insurance, et cetera, et cetera. So we're actually following industry standard here, okay? Now, a second benefit, which you're not going to see yet, but we are on the way to developing, is that with the friends and LEAP sub-landlord, sub-tenant relationship, we can secure tax-exempt status on property taxes. When we first negotiated with the landlord, um, the favorable, you remember we got a pretty, a pretty good rent. Very good rent, in fact. No thanks to Roberto and the team. But part of that was based on an expectation that we would be receiving an exemption from property taxes and that that would be passed along to the landlord. Remember, the building was prior a commercial building, even though it did have some educational uses. It was still a, a, um, a commercial building. So the landlord was paying taxes. However, the law requires in order for us as LEAP to pass on our tax exempt status, we have to be leasing from a not-for-profit. And under this arrangement, Friends, which is newly established, which is our landlord, is a not-for-profit. And therefore now, Friends can pass along that tax exempt status to the landlord so that now so that still requires a little bit more paperwork right there's some particular filings uh, there's this whole process of condominiumizing etc cetera, etc cetera. but the basic point is this second benefit which is critical because we got a really good rate um sets up that that process okay um, the third document is basically the consent of the landlord. Obviously, the landlord, it's his building, right? <laughs> he has every right to know who he's tenant, who, who he's contracting with. It was with us, and now he has consented to um, our transfer of our rights and obligations to friends. Okay? So that consent is absolutely critical. 
Um, so Cliff, Mike, uh, David, have I missed anything? Robert, Michael, any, any more comments that might be useful? I think you covered it all. I worked all day on this. No. <laughs> um, Roberto? Michael? That's it. Sorry, I'm, I was muted. Um, I, I would like Cliff, if possible, to uh, explain for some of the board members who may not be as familiar with the lease, just the general uh, way that that simple lease works. And, and I really mean very simple. Um, what rights uh, the landlord retains, what we retain, what obligations the landlord retains. And, and I, by that, I mean uh, in terms of maintenance or correction and, um, and what rights of access that the landlord may have to the school. And I, I, I mean, you know, back of the envelope. I'm sorry to load it up. Yeah, no, sure. So, so I think the easiest way of thinking about it is uh, in a triple net lease, you're responsible for everything that goes on inside of your walls. Uh, the landlord makes sure the building stands uh, is secure. So the foundation, the facade, the roof, et cetera, major building systems that serve the entirety of the building. Uh, they can't disturb you in your tenancy. The landlord can't. As long as you're paying your rent, you get to be there um, undisturbed for as long as you'd like under the term of the lease. Uh, and, and access uh, is, is limited. I mean, if they needed to make a repair to the structure, they would have to coordinate with you. But essentially, it's your home that you, you can't be disturbed in as long as you pay your rent. Oh, so that is a subordination, non-disturbance, and a tournament agreement. Well, so the, so the, the, the subordination, non-disturbance, and a tournament agreement is the bank one that we're putting up. So the, the, the one wrinkle in all this is under the lease, your landlord, Fifth Sunset LLC, cannot do anything we just said. Right. But if he were to default on his mortgage loan with Signature Bank, sign without a subordination, non-disturbance, and a tournament agreement, Signature Bank could come in and they could say, get out. Got it. Got it. This, what, what the SNDA protects is, it, and arguably they wouldn't do that, right? Because they don't want to be a landlord. They, they would rather just make sure rent is paid and then, you, but they could sell the building and maybe they wouldn't want you. So the SNDA makes sure that that cannot happen. This lease cannot go anywhere, whether it's Jack Cohen, who's the landlord or it's Signature Bank because Jack Cohen defaulted. That lease is secure and your rights to be undisturbed in your home is secure. Thank you. And so really, uh, part of the point of that is that uh, we retain the triple net advantages of, of that lease, but with that come our obligations to make sure that everything in this building works, right? We don't have a landlord in the traditional sense of... of uh, Just much. to keep the roof over your head, right? And all the major stuff uh, working, but yeah. So everyone needs, should follow that, and that's the structure we, we, we want and, and we like. Um, the other point I want to raise on the sublease is the payment schedule. And do we have that handy in the slide, whoever is sharing? Well, Michael K. Akio, uh, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Robert, our um, financial advisor, had given us a short kind of chronology. And my understanding, if you, if you, do, if you don't have it, oh, hi, Maho. If you don't have that slide, um, do you want to pull up the, the verbiage? What I want to show here is, um, you know, I should have, I'm sorry, I, I've had a very busy day uh, and week as it happens, but really what I wanted to show it's, is how the payment the email that we all got, that I sent out to everybody. So if you want to. Right. So in, in, in the payment schedule, which is exhibit one to the sublease and, and may appear on some slide, I, I don't know. Uh, you'll see there are annual obligations for rent and, and monthly payments that uh, def divide that number by 12. And that number is, uh, is derived from, from primarily the things that Joaquin said. And I just want to make sure we understand we've added to that um, over the period of the existing lease, some basic rent. Well, no, not, not even that. Over the first five years of the lease where we have budgeted, we've allocated some million and a half dollars there to management fees to friends of LEAP. And, um, and I've been trying to understand a little bit better about what that is. Um, so I wanna flag it for everybody so we understand. And, and so far what I understand from Robert is that um, that helps us uh, allocate additional rent assistance by um, fixing the cost of the rent. 
It allows us to house capital to perhaps use for other things and, uh, and, and to make necessary maintenance on, on these, on these uh, buildings. Yeah, thank you. That's the document I'm looking at. Right. And so what you'll see here is that in, in the second year, there's a, you know, there starts to become a significant departure from the original leasehold uh, totals, even if you were to estimate them. And, um, and, I, and I just think that's something everyone should see and understand. And I think that's part of our discussion that will again come up on Tuesday uh, to make sure we have a very good and solid understanding of the role of friends and making sure that that is, um, is all uh, working in one direction. Um, obviously, uh, I've said this already and, and I've been put in my spot, but it's true. We all have the same goals and we need to remember that. Um, you know, I just, uh, when I see these things structurally, I worry about what happens if no one in this room remains, you know, we're on the bus together and it, hit, you know, whatever happens to it. Um, where do we leave this thing? And so uh, I, I think it's a salient point given the value. Man, you're talking about you, real money. That's all. Right. So, um, Cliff, you've, you've done a lot of these deals and 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 know how they're structured, you know, better than anyone. Um, you do end up seeing uh, larger and larger numbers. Uh, in terms of you know being put towards what's listed as a management fee sometimes for those kinds of strategic uses um would you want to speak to that at all so you know as long as they're being reserved and used for real estate uh operations that that's that's the concern that you know if they're being used for you know books or for hiring teachers or staff or, or things that are not related to operations in, in the real estate sense, um, that that's the concern that we typically have that, you know, how is this going to be viewed under the rental assistance statute with the idea that the rental assistance statute was designed to say, okay, if you're not in free DOE co-located space where you get the benefit of, you know, electricity is paid for, you don't have any rent, you have any securities up front provided by NYPD, um, you know, paint is free, like all that great stuff that if you're in a private space, you should be similarly situated. So in a private space, you have, like we're talking about with triple net, you have maintenance obligations, things are gonna need to be replaced, things are gonna break. Right. Um, you obviously have rent to pay, you have utilities to pay and all that. So um, those numbers do escalate and they escalate the, as you um, grow and then as you phase into a full K-5. So it'd be expected that they would grow. Um, is, this, is this similar to a reserve study? So for example, in condominiums, um, they'll do typically a reserve study required by law every five years to look at the life cycle, right? And the replacement um, costs. And then, and then divided by that, let's say, period of time and then start putting a reserve, right? So that when that time comes, when a particular system breaks down, you've saved enough money to replace it. Is that akin to this? The concept is similar, for sure, yes. And, and there's uh, some, some like civic builders, the nonprofit developer, uh, right. and others require it. So they will say in their leases that, you know, exactly. starting in the second year, you're putting 50 grand a year, 100 grand a year away because they think what they built is going to break at some time in the future. And they want to make sure that a school has the money to spend at that period of time is already socked away. So similar thing, yes. They're figuring out the useful life of things and that it's going to expire right. and it'll need to be replaced. But I also want to point out, uh, David, that the increase of these, of these annual rents are also part of the increased schedule, the escalation schedule um, that was agreed with the landlord just on the rental. So no, no, I, I understand. The point I'm making here is that if you follow the, mm -hmm. the cash flow, you'll see that they don't, they don't go in tandem with the lease. And so I'm just pointing it out. My question asked the other way, and Cliff, I, that, that answer is the one I was looking for to Good. explain yeah. to people how we utilize that and, and to make sure we maximize the benefit of what it can do. But to ask the question the other way is, um, and I'll pick on Michael because his picture is below mine right now on the screen, but <laughs> if Friends of Leap decides that uh, they need Michael as their liaison officer to the school and they're gonna pay him $100,000 a year to do that, um, what protection do we have from something like that? 
I'm sorry, I don't understand. Do you mean that the money isn't being diverted or? or... It goes to friends and they have full autonomy over it. I'm asking a question and you know, yeah. it's not to be uh, contrarian here. It's a, I want to know. Uh, there, look, there is, um, it is important that this board stay in touch with the Friends of board, which right now is Friends of Leap, uh, one of whom is Roberto. Uh, and that, you know, that's thing that's mutually discussed and agreed up upon. I know that Friends of, in its capacity as a nonprofit organization, has its own mission, which I couldn't quote verbatim, but I believe is specifically tied to supporting Leap to a Language Academy. Right, which is why I chose my example, because having yeah. you as our liaison officer would be in line with that mission. Well, I'm, uh, the, the question yeah. again here is, it's really about exposure uh, to decisions that may be out of our control. It's not, uh, not to put you on the spot. You know, yeah, I, think, I think there's some inevitable level of, of coordination that would have to be in place uh, between the two organizations. Um, I, and so Cliff, you and I discussed this earlier this morning, but, um, uh, you know, to the extent we've we've built in some of that relationship into the bylaws of Friends or uh, right. SNDA or something like that, I, I just think that goes a long way to giving people who may fill our shoes in the future. And, and you know, I'm looking at 30 plus years here uh, of obligations under this uh, escalation, um, a lot more comfort that uh, that we're going to we're going to be there hand in hand. Um, and, and so all of this being said, uh, I'm on board with, with this, uh, this document. I just want people to have their uh, eyes wide open when we walk into it. Right. And um, we are. So, so the, the Friends of Board is meeting tomorrow. And, and we did actually uh, put together a draft, amended, and restated set of bylaws, which, you know, certainly I, I'm going to recommend that the Friends of Board adopts. They will have no reason not to, where it, it, it you know, makes clear that uh, there will always be one member of the Friends of the LEAP Dual Language Academy Charter School Board or senior leadership team who will sit on the Friends of Board. We, so, we actually want to make an amendment of that. So it's either going to be the executive director or, or it's going to be a member of the board that is elected by the board. Okay? So it's either the executive director or a member of the board that is duly elected by the board. By which board? Uh, of, of Friends. Of LEAP, of LEAP, excuse me. Uh, okay, so, okay. Yeah, so, but, uh, uh, wait, hold on, David. So, I'm sorry, I look at this rent schedule and I'm, I'm a little um, puzzled by what you're mentioning and, and I think I understand, but are- Can I share it, my screen somehow? Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe you're looking at a different screen because I'm only looking at annual and monthly and if we, let, me sorry. Share, let me oh host disabled okay can someone give me the right to share the screen or can bob share the five year i know david because if there is an amount that is being okay, sort of on, held david. by friends you know we we can clearly and easily sharing has failed to start the window i selected is invalid <laughs> Nori es majo. It doesn't like the uh, spreadsheet, huh? Share. Okay. So here we are, right? This is uh, the model Bob shared with me. It may be minorly updated from what you've last seen, but they're not going to be significant changes. Can you see my mouse here where I'm highlighting? Yeah. yeah. So here in this top line, 179, we're seeing the base rent. Okay. This is the obligation as it exists under the triple net lease to the landlord. Mm -hmm. The other lines here represent, you know, the incidental kind of fees that go around with owning a building, repairs, utilities, janitor mm -hmm. services, etc. This line here is the one I'm raising. Okay. Okay. And it is, uh, it's noted as a management fee. And so over the period of the projection, which is not the, the period of the, lo of the loan, of the lease rather. Right. A million and a half dollars. And I, you know, look, we're talking about what uh, a total life of this projection 
is, uh, is $10 million. So, you know, a, a significant portion of that rent goes to this fee. And I don't want people to not see it before we vote. And again, I've said this, I'll say it, I, I, I'm in support of this as the general notion. I just wanna make sure that we understand what's happening and how those relationships are connected. Um, and again, I know I'm late to the game and I do this all the time, so I'm sorry, but uh, I think it's worth, worth seeing. David, I wanna thank you. Um, I think the word management fee can sometimes be very misleading, okay? So I, I would like to have a more defined definition of what management fee means. We do know Somewhere I read is that the friends, the, the kind, generous three people are basically working on a volunteer basis. And I do believe there are some reasonable costs that they should be allowed to incur, such as you know financial reporting or whatever is required. But with respect to the management fee, not only is it a considerable amount of money over time, it is a very ambiguous term. So, can we please define that? If you're going to say it's a sinking fund, if you're going to say it operates basically as a, as a reserve for uh, the expected life of the building, that's fine. Um, but it needs to be I, I, defined. I really, I really think where we work this out is the relationship between the two entities. Yeah, but regardless. Yeah, but yes, I, but again, I, I know I'm making a big deal. Well, you brought it up, David, so I'm, I'm just suggesting <laughs> it's not a bad, it's an excellent point, but while we're already here, you know, just understand that. And, and by the way, when we have our conversation in two days, all of this will continue to get clearer and clearer, okay? Um, our focus was really on the relationship as regards to the landlord, but I think this is an important point. Okay, but it shouldn't necessarily affect, right. Look, and, and again, the general notion, we've got to get these things done. They make a ton of sense. Um, so in terms of assigning the lease and subordinating ourselves and figuring out how to get that all done, that, that, that's what we have to do here. Um, I'm just aiming the question at does it increase the exposure, right? The, the base rent is lower, that's all. Right. Well, there is one more thing. So what happens when um, the estimates, the projected estimates of utilities just increases. So let's just say electric suddenly doubles or triples because of climate change or what have you, right? Um, is there, does the sublease indicate that gross rent will, is either pegged to like inflation or is pegged to any kind of, or, or is revisited or reviewed? That's just a quick question. I'm seeing 30 years of straight payments. Am I wrong, Cliff? Hmm. I, I didn't put together the budget, but yeah, that's, that's what's in there. Yeah. Right. 30 years of straight payments. So they what ask, happens, they, they so what happens when the cost of the building, quote unquote, i.e. utilities double or triple? Well, this is where, look, I mean, they're, they're related organizations. So taking out the management fee or facilities reserve or whatever you want to call it, you know, you can't put the friends of organization into a deficit that wouldn't make right. any sense. I, I don't intend to take it out. I just intend to understand it and, and make sure that it's. it's well, right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking outside of the management fee piece, which, you know, I'm seeing for the first time here too, but, but not, not, not relevant. The whole idea, if utilities did double or triple and exceeded the rental assistance or the rent that's being paid under the sublease, right? If we still kept that same construct, where friends of is responsible for providing the enumerated utilities and services, the and school would have, we'd have to change the rent schedule. Right, they'd be in the hole. We'd right, we'd either change the rent schedule. We'd have no lights. Okay. Right? I, mean, we'd have, yeah. <laughs> I understand, I wanna go back to the management line because that is basically your reserve. That is basically your catch-all. That is your catch-all for maintaining the building. That is your catch-all for facility growth. That is your catch-all for what happens if utilities double. So please, it's very simple. Define it, put the priority of uses, and that's that. Okay, but we do, and I think Dave is absolutely correct, we do need to get a, a sense of that. It's a terrible word to use. It often means slush you know what i mean not a slush fund but you know it's it's a very ambiguous term and i think with that i would feel very comfortable
But David, as always, you always catch it. <laughs> uh, again, I'm not trying to, I, I know I always make trouble, but that's not my intention. Well, no, you make trouble, trouble and I try to do the solution. So that's a good thing. I'll also say that Bob, uh, while we've been doing this, has helped me with uh, the inspector issue as well. So, uh, well, we're still so working. Thank on you for that, that Bob. <laughs> okay. I think we appreciate so, all these points. It's it's a it's not a, a small undertaking here. So I think I know we're we're going over the time that we promised here, but I appreciate you guys. I, I do want to add one more point, which is absolutely critical. Okay. We have to, even though we have two units, we have friends and leap, and we are working to make sure that their interests are 100% aligned, okay? We talked about this. We're gonna make sure that the board, that their bylaws include at least one LEAP member, either the executive director or a board appointed board member. Um, but in addition, or and in addition, it's important to know that LEAP, while Friends is the one who pays, you know, the landlord, right? Is that correct? Pays the landlord, pays yeah. the different bills. Leap can't sit around and just, you know, take a breather, <laughs> right? The minute those things are due for the for for the friends, they are due for leap. There is absolutely what do they call that? There is no air between something. I, there, there, there's a phrase I don't know what it called. There's a prior, right, Cliff? Nothing between the dawn and the light, right? There's no distance. The right. two really yeah. are in lockstep. That is critical to know. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm, in this case, Cliff, it's prior, and I didn't uh, go back and track the timing. But we are due to pay friends in advance of their payment, and uh, and that would be the flow, right? Yeah, so under the sublease, you pay friends and then friends pays okay, the right. Way. Correct. And generally, what is that? One or two days before they have to payment? I mean, I, I want that all really clear. Okay, electronic, whatever. I want it all very clear. Same day. Hey, I mean, I don't remember under the lease. There's probably, a, you know, there's probably a grace period until day seven or day 10. It's not the first of the month or, or you're out. So, yeah. I understand. I just want our board to know that. Just because there is another entity does not, it is still, we are the entity that basically has the money. <laughs> and we're going to repeat that later on on Thursday. So let's just get used to that. <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, I'm sorry. It's okay. Understood. Are, are there any more questions, Charles? Charles, looks like you've been analyzing every clause there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I, I got it. Melissa? This isn't, this isn't anywhere as granular. I, I don't mean to interrupt. If <laughs> this isn't anywhere as granular as the other questions, but could you name for us just for con contextual reference uh, some other charters who have done this to serve this purpose, formed a friends of? I, I mean, you know, obviously everything I do is privileged. Oh, um, sure. No, if there's, if, I mean, dozens, there's, 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 there's dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens that yeah. I've done and, 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 and that I've personally done and, and including my own. So neighborhood <laughs> charter schools, I could talk about, that's mm -hmm. not, you know, it's not a client. It's I'm on, I'm on its board. This is exactly what we do. Uh, we are ahead of you guys because we're on our second facility. We're working on the leasehold condominium process on our, our K-8 facility, which was delivered last year. It's going to exempt us from $500,000 of real property tax. Um, yeah, so I, I practice what I preach. I sit on my friends of board. The other two people on the friends of board are not uh, neighborhood charter schools folks, um, but it, it works well. We had somebody made an error. Um, it's not, it's not uh, Rob's team because they don't work with us, unfortunately, at least not yet, but somebody else made an error in the sublease uh, rent schedule that was initially implemented. We are friends, so we went back and we revised it because it was going to screw friends up. So it, it all does work in a symbiotic way. Are we raising kind of the, I, 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 is what, are the concerns we're raising pretty much in line generally with, with, with the scope of concerns that you've faced? I mean, I, I would say they're, they're a bit more granular, <laughs> to be honest, and it's fine. Uh, but we're, we're, you know, it's, if this was a corporate transaction where it was a true arm's length one in a way that like we didn't control the third party at all, right? You could, using my example, I let, yeah, let the other day, like somebody could take the money and go bet it on rent. That's not going to happen. 
Right. So well, um, I think that's my problem, Cliff, is I'm, you know, I'm not in this universe at all. So, you know, I'm looking at this thing from that lens of, uh, look, I, I like these guys on the phone a lot. We spend a lot of time together. We talk, but uh, Atlantic City is just down the road. And uh, exactly. I mean, yeah, look, pick your joke. I don't mean any of that. But yeah, I, no, I, I started that one. <laughs> so. Well, and generally you have something kind of established, like an affiliate, okay? You know what an affiliate is. You've got a relationship. Here, you know, that's the only part that, you know, and I know you're going to work on that, clarifying for the board that the interests are 100% aligned, regardless of who's here and who's not here. God forbid something should happen to us, as David keeps saying. I hope you don't totally mean agree to, to happen to us. Well, I think that's probably enough. <laughs> All right. So, okay. All right. I think there? we're tapped out of questions unless you and David have any others. Uh, we've carved out the payment indemnity in the new draft of the sublease. Yes. And that was approved by the landlord and it was approved by Signature Bank as well. Perfect. They don't care. Nope. They were like, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Yep. Then I'm good. Okay. I'm good too. Uh, if you want to call a vote, I'll second that. Joaquin, you want to go? Sure. Second? So um, I move that we adopt the resolution that in turn um, ratifies or, 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 or adopts the four mentioned reference agreements with respect to the leasing of the facility um, that is owned by the landlord and that relates to friends and the school. Uh, I second the uh, vote, the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion passes. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thank you all. Good job. Robert, thank you. Special thanks to Robert. And thank you, Robert. Thank you, Cliff. Okay. Thanks, guys. My pleasure. Thank Good you, part. Joaquin and David, for all your work on this. Thank you, Michael and Roberto, for getting us to this point. Thank you to everybody for reviewing the materials. We know it's a lot to take on. We uh, and I know we have another meeting on Tuesday. We're still on. We're still set to send out materials for that tonight. Correct. Okay. Great. Yep. We will also, we're, the Tuesday's meeting is going to focus uh, very largely on the budget, as well as uh, the DVI vote and the La Raza, and the La Raza loan. So those are major financial uh, discussions as well. Uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna again have uh, Joaquin and David and Bob uh, lead us through a lot of that. So, but please do make sure to review the materials in advance. Cliff, you will be available for that meeting as well. I hope. Uh, Tuesday? Yes. I, I think it would be helpful, Roberto. I'll talk to, I'll work it out. We'll okay. look at your calendar, Cliff. Hopefully you'll be available. Yeah. I, same time, same channel. Yeah, I, I have whiteboard meeting on, on Wednesday, so that's perfect. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you very right. much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Take care, everybody. Bye.